Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of a brand new tier 9 premium Chinese heavy tank. It is the WZ-114. This vehicle packs higher alpha damage than any other Chinese heavy tank in the game at 530. It has decent upper hull armor, a decent turret armor as well, albeit with a weak point, and good side scraping capabilities. This seems to be the all-purpose heavy tank, and is it destined to be the definition of power creep in World of Tanks, now that it's going to be the second tier 9 premium vehicle that makes big credits? Well, that's what I'm here to try and tell you today. Before I get stuck into the gameplay to show you what this absolute jackal and hide behemoth is capable of, let's give a quick rundown of the statistics of the vehicle. So I'm going to compare the 114 to its closest competition and similar vehicles in the form of the German E75 and the Japanese Type 4 Heavy, and I'm also going to throw in the Sturzwagen K for good measure because that is the only tier 9 premium tank in the game so far. So immediately you should notice this vehicle has abysmal DPM, and I'm not using that word frivolously. 1590 is lower than the lowest low of any tier 9 vehicle apart from the G-Saw. <laughs> That's a British light tank after all. When we take a look at how bad the DPM of this vehicle is, it's not just bad compared to all of the tier 9 and tier 10 tanks in the game, it jumps below even the TNH VZ-51, which uses an autoloader, by at least 10%. This thing just can't compare to other tier 9 and tier 10 tanks with regards to its damage output and it's also significantly lower than the vast majority of tier 8s. This is a massive hindering factor for the WZ-114 as in my extensive play session in this vehicle it just felt so darn frustrating to not be able to get in that extra shot if you need to be able to deliver one to the enemy tank to being pressured by multiple vehicles and just not having the damage per minute to be able to handle the situation. Or, frankly, just having to play really darn passively on a ridge line or a corner because you realize you can't all in the enemy tank unless it is literally one vehicle. And hopefully they're pretty low on hit points. To put into perspective how bad this is, nobody really thinks that the E75 is a flashy high DPM heavy tank, but that thing is packing 33% more DPM than the WZ-114. And both of them have the same alpha damage at 530, with the 114 have a, having a 130mm main armament, which is actually really nice for overmatching, you know, those pesky 40mm plates, like all of the other tanks in this comparison can do, except the Sturzwagen K. However, everything else here with regards to the firepower of this tank is amazing. Look at this penetration. 266 on its standard rounds. That would make many tier 10 heavy tanks blush. In addition, the vehicle gets good high explosive anti-tank rounds with 311 millimeters of penetration. That would be workable on a tier 10 tank, although low for a tier 10 tank. And it's got ah, quite disappointing high explosive rounds for such a large caliber gun of 660 with 65 millimeters of pen. The standard rounds on this tank are not just high in penetration, which means that you're going to reliably not have to load gold, and reliably penetrate, they've also got incredible shell velocity at 1,271, meaning that you can actually engage fairly effectively at decent distances in a tank like this. If, of course, you can tame the vehicle's horrendous gun handling, this is a complete jackal and hide tank. Worst DPM, but great pen and great shell velocity. And take a look at the gun handling here. Abysmal aim time, something that you would expect to have on a large caliber tank destroyer like the FV4005, or even something like the Caliban. 3.9 seconds aim time means that you are aiming forever in a vehicle like this to be able to get fully accurate. But look at the accuracy of the tank. It's 0.33, meaning that this is an incredibly accurate vehicle that will do very decent when it's fully aimed. It just takes forever to be able to get there. Add to this the vehicle's horrendous, literally probably worst in class, worst in game kind of gun handling at 0.33 when moving and 0.33 when turning the turret. And that makes the awful aim time bloom out even further, even with micro movements, meaning that then it takes you forever to be able to get this, the, the gun fully aimed, which you're never really going to do. When you combine that with the horrendous damage per minute, it can make missing your shots more frustrating in a tank like this. And not just frustrating, but also game-changing than any other 
vehicle. And it's something that just seems to happen so consistently because of the horrendous gun handling. However, the vehicle has amazing gun depression at 10 degrees, like the Type 4 Heavy and the Sturitzvan K, which allows it to work a ridgeline like an absolute boss. Now let's move on to the mobility of this vehicle. There's not great news for this tank. It's limited at 33 forwards, unlike the E75s. Rather nippy 40, and the Sturitzvan K at 40, but at least it's better than the Type 4 Heavy with regards to its top speed limit. One thing that's interesting, however, is the vehicle actually has a really good power to weight ratio with a healthy engine and the vehicle weighing 70 tons, unlike the E75 and the Type 4 Heavy, meaning that it reliably gets up to its limited 33 kilometers an hour top speed limit. Accordingly, you might want to try and improve this with a turbo and that, and because of the great engine power of the vehicle, you are consistently going to get up to its increased turbo's top speeds of roughly about 38 kilometers an hour. The vehicle's ground resistances are identical to the E75 on hard and medium terrain, but they are worse on soft, so be careful if you're planning to go through the Valley of Lakeville in this tank. One thing to watch out for is the vehicle's turret traverse is a pretty awful 18, a lot like the E75, but the vehicle's tank traverse is 24, significantly worse than the E75, and this thing does feel like a bit of a lumbering beast, even if you do slap a turbo on this tank. Now let's talk about the armor of this thing. It's just all over the place, really, and it looks like it's incredibly thick. 140 at the front, 60 at the side, not so good. 300 on the front of the turret and 175 on the side. This thing looks like an absolute behemoth. And when we go and take a look at the armor model, and keep in mind, this is as if you were getting shot at by 266 millimeters of penetration. We can see that the upper hull, when you're not angling, is about 270 millimeters effective. The lower plate is about 200 millimeters thick, so good luck tier 7 tanks getting through that, even with your gold rounds. And the turret is chonky, absolutely chonky all over, with no real weak points apart from the cupola on the top of the tank. This thing, even if people are firing 311 heat penetration, is going to reliably take shells from any kind of tank, apart from maybe something like a Jagdpanzer E100. And that makes this thing just so darn awesome on a ridgeline. When you're using your 10 degrees of gun depression in this thing, it's probably one of the best hull down tanks at tier 9. And one thing that I do enjoy about the vehicle is that it has this angled side armor through the upper portion of the hull, which is actually 60 millimeters thick, which means that nobody's going to be able to fire up into your tank and be able to overmatch you unless they're an FV215B183, which actually makes this thing very good for poking up over ridgelines as the whole of the upper hull will be an auto ricochet and even heat rounds are barely going to be able to get up into that weak point under the flaps, even if they're able to avoid the spaced protection. Add to this, best in class hit points, such a bizarre thing about this tank at 2300 and this thing has as many hit points as a moistian and in fact it has more hit points than most other tier 10 heavy tanks in the game matching the 113 and trumping vehicles like the t57 heavy the amx m454 or the object 277 this if you combine with a durability module can give your vehicle outrageous hit points and give you the longevity that you need to weather the storm or just to be able to make better trades with its 530 alpha damage against other tanks. A passing mention should be made to the fact that the vehicle has significantly better camo on the move than the E75 but it's still not really worthwhile and the vehicle has 390 meters view range which is kind of disappointing compared to the E75 because you're, you're going to be wanting to take coated optics on this tank on certain maps unless you have all of the field mods a really good crew and you're using a premium consumable. So you might be asking next what kind of equipment would you recommend on a tank like this and it's definitely a tricky one. I personally feel that with a vehicle like this what's the point of boosting the damage per minute when surely the entire vehicle is focused around its hit points improving its mobility and possibly improving its all-round capacity with a module like Vents. Accordingly, my preferred way to set this tank up was with a durability module, the improved hardening, a turbo inside the mobility slot to give this thing a reasonable top speed and Vents to make everything better about the tank. I'd like to warn you however, if you do choose to set your vehicle up like this, your gun handling is going to be horrendous and you better not move very quickly or you should expect to aim for an exceedingly long time. So just quickly I want to talk about the field mods. It's more interesting to talk about the field mods on a tier 9 tank than a tier 8 tank. Of course we're going to take all terrain suspension because we want to be able to get places faster. This one's actually an interesting one. I would usually always take aiming circle size on every single tank. 
but considering this vehicle is usually fighting in close quarters combat and it already has great accuracy, I would actually rather improve the vehicle's horrendous four seconds aim time by 5% and take a 3% accuracy loss. Because I felt with this vehicle that I was never truly having issues when it came to sniping, but I was having massive issues when it came to aiming. And we can see that the field mod actually improves my aiming time by nearly 0.2 for a loss of 0.01 accuracy, which is countered by the fact that I'm using vents in this tank. This is something that I usually wouldn't do for any other vehicle, but considering it has amazing accuracy and terrible aim time, it's something that I, I feel that I would want to do in the 114, but I'm still testing it out. So view range, we're going to be taking that. And now this is an interesting one to talk about for a premium tank. I'm going to be taking padding removal on this vehicle. That improves my traverse speed, which is bad on this vehicle. And it's also going to improve my top speed, which is bad on this vehicle, and allow my power to weight ratio to kind of make up for that. But be warned, I am going to take more high explosive shell damage, ramming damage, stun duration, and my crew are going to be more vulnerable for that. And finally, I am going to take a turbo module on this vehicle because it's just so darn slow. Even with a turbo and padding removal, it's still limited at 40 kilometers an hour. And I truly feel like this tank needs all of the mobility it can get to con try and control the engagement, especially with the reverse speed. But you know what? I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's jump into the combat. So firstly, I want to roll out on Erlenberg. I want to highlight what equipment I'm going to be taking. I'm going to be taking the improved durability module, a turbo with the mobility slot, and I'm going to be taking bounty vents. No fancy bond equipment here. And I'm going to be taking a directive, a 10,000 credit directive, not a bond directive, to improve the snapshot that I have on my crew. Because of course, I'm not going to be taking vertical stabilizers on a tank like this. This tank is, it's definitely an enigma. It's bizarre as to what equipment you should take on this tank. I think it's just going to be personal preference. I think this vehicle has so many different competitive equipment loadouts. The fact that it's got the most hit points means that with the durability module, I'm packing 2,640 hit points. Also, this is improving the hit points of my tracks, which will mean that it's going to be harder for my opponents to immobilize me. And when you don't have very good DPM, your mobility is key to be able to try and control the engagement. And so I feel that the durability module, not something that I would actually usually want to take on a heavy tank, will be great on a vehicle like this with great hit point scaling. Man, looking at this thing having 2,640 hit points, literally over double what the some of the tier 7 heavies that you're going to fight against in this vehicle will have is just outrageous. So we're going to side script around the corner very slowly. Bounce the, well, not bounce the A phase one. We're actually going to get penned by the A phase one there. Somehow he managed to actually damage my tank and my tracks. Maybe I'm over angling my side armor there a little bit. So I'm going to make an adjustment. And unfortunately for me, my shell actually misses the A phase one. But okay, I've just got to make small of movements against this vehicle. So he's going to track me this time. I've got my armor correctly laid out. I'm not going to use my repair kit because maybe I'm going to get amaracked or alternatively maybe I'm going to get pressured and so by holding it I should be a little bit safer. We're going to bounce him and this is where wow, starting to make some nice alpha damage hits. 548 but does anyone else feel that we're just kind of got almost Jagdpanzer E100 reload at the moment and for 530 look, don't get me wrong 530 alpha damage is great. And the vehicle here, you know, super solid. Spoilers that if my opponents were firing gold rounds at me, what they could do is just shoot the, the side flap here. It's not actually the easiest thing to be able to see on this tank. They could be able to engage that. And right now, I'm just playing against players who frankly think that they can just shoot through the tracks and the side armor, and that's not going to work. The 263 looks like it catches my lower plate, but I've got higher alpha damage than that tier 9 tank destroyer, and so I am going to trade very well into that. Even And even if I don't have higher alpha damage, I've literally got 50% more hit points. This is actually crazy when you think about it. 2,640 hit points, and that AE phase 1 is boosting his, and he's only managed to get up to 1,800. I'm literally packing 800 hit points more than that heavy tank. I think about shooting the IS-3 and realize that I don't really have the gun handling for it. So instead, I'm going to aim at the AE phase 1, and look what happens. You can see the frustration with the shake of the mouse there from me. I realize just how 
important that shot is for the pace of the game. And now the A phase one thinks, wow, I've got the opportunity to be able to push back against this player. Maybe I can manage to try and flank the concept. Uh, mate, I think that was a little too brave. While it is the right thing to do to try and push this thing in between its reloads, uh, maybe not against a concept and a 114. I think that was a little bit bold. So with the field mods on this tank, improving my aim time, you can see that it's still not quite good enough. I, I would argue that vertical stabilizers would probably be more important than a gun rammer on this tank in a lot of situations. And with that four seconds aim time, which I've improved down to about three and a half through the use of the field mod, although I make my accuracy a little bit worse, it still feels like it has horrendous gun handling on this tank. I cannot emphasize enough just how darn frustrating this tank feels when you have to aim forever and then you have to reload forever as well. You kind of just feel like a bit of a spectator in the game. You just feel as if the game is starting to, to pass by and you're missing your opportunities to be able to get into it, to deal damage, to be able to pick up kills, to be able to get some experience, I guess to be able to make credits, which is why a lot of people would be playing a tank like this. But this tank is still solid. And when you set it up like this with a turbo and you've got that remove padding or the cladding, not sure what it is, then it's just a solid tank. But oh my lord, how disappointing is it when you get a little bit of bad RNG or I aim badly? And I just decide, why don't I use my hit points to crush my opponent? Maybe my gun handling is going to troll me. But how about I just go and park my tank on top of you? And we managed to crush the 263 there. I turn my attention towards the T103. And I'm going to be reloading forever against this autoloader. So I think, ah, why don't I just throw my weight around as well? I can go at near 40. I weigh 70 tons. Does that count as two ram kills in just a couple of minutes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it does. All right, spoilers in this game. We're going to aim. We're not going to get anywhere. And that's it. And that is kind of your run of the mill game for the 114. It has moments of frustration. It has moments of woohoo, I got some alpha damage. And it definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, has way more hit points than everything else at tier 9, apart from a Moissan or cutting it close to a Yag Tiger. And the fact that I end this game with 501 hit points left over, I took over 2,000 damage in a tier 9 heavy that kept me in the game to be able to, to get through it. So now I'm loading in on Kharkiv and I'm trying to think, how can I set an ambush with this vehicle? I'm not really going to do very good at long range with a tank like this against those kind of vehicles, especially with my weak point, unfortunately being around the right hand corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull back and I'm going to try and bait the IS-7 into coming round. And then hopefully I can come around the corner and I can hopefully snapshot quickly. I try and shoot at the front of his hull. It wasn't to be. Shouldn't have fired a high explosive anti-tank round there really. But I don't know. I guess I should have predicted that the IS-7 would turn and drive inwards. Oh, sound detection. An absolute useless crew skill for the most part. But when I'm playing on my press account like this, it's something that we can still manage to have as I do have all of the crew skills. So in this situation, you're just going to see where the 114 is absolutely beautiful. You've got gun depression, 10 degrees the most on any Chinese heavy tank. Basically like an E75 with regards to that, or even just a touch better. And you can club down with these wonderful 311 heat rounds. And even aiming down at the lower plate of the EIS-7, we can just manage to trash them. And this is where this tier 9 heavy tank just feels almost like a tier 10 heavy tank. When you aren't taking into account it's horrendous aim time. When you aren't taking into account, it's horrendous damage per minute. The vehicle just feels great. But now, situation is going to change. Where did that one even go? I don't even know where that shot went. I thought I was nearly fully aimed. I guess I wasn't. And that shell is going to create a butterfly effect in this game where just everything is going to go wrong. You could argue that I'm frustrated and tilt. This tank tilted me. So I'm going to go around the corner looking for a shot against the T57 Heavy. We're going to take an FB shell to the side. We're going to bounce a 560. Our rate of fire is so darn bad in this tank that the T57 Heavy manages to have the two seconds to be able to shoot us twice while we're, twice while we're reloading. And suddenly, things aren't looking so good for this tank. And I, I just can't emphasize enough how much of a jackal and hide this tank is. Sometimes it does feel like it's your best friend. And then sometimes situations like this happen where uh, I guess the FE215B183 managed to hit uh, a thin part on my upper hull 
I thought they were meant to nerf the high explosive rounds. Why did I take 900 damage in that kind of a situation? And I know exactly where he is, but I'm thinking, ah, I've got 915 hit points. Now I'm hiding most of my armor. There's no way the FV will be able to get me right in this situation. Wrong. Apparently the FV hit me immediately again for 915. What? And just to show you where those shots hit to be able to do that kind of significant damage, um, 901 splash to the top of the outside turret. The T-57 Heavy just hit me in the hull and the hull as I was trying to get the shell into him. And then somehow this FV-215B183 followed up his 900 alpha damage HE shell with an additional 915 alpha damage HE shell, which hit just above the mantlet. Wargaming, I thought you'd nerf these high explosive rounds. Of course, unless the customers are paying 8,000 credits a shot, right? So far, I haven't really showed you just how good this vehicle's ridge line performance is. And I, I want to show you an example of it when we're playing on Malinovka here. So it looks like we've started off the game by slamming around into the side of that VK, although we didn't spot him at the time. And this is just such a bizarre experience for a Chinese heavy tank that we have just 10 degrees of gun depression. You can see I'm moving my mouse so slowly so my reticle doesn't bloom out. And I would recommend that you do that in this vehicle as well if you're not using vertical stabilizers, which I am not. As I mentioned, this is the kind of tank which I would love to have about five different modules on. I would love to have vert stabs, turbo, vents, gun rammer, um, and also the durability module, but you can't have it all. And I think you've just got to end up deciding what kind of equipment is going to be best for you. As I decide to use intuition here to be able to switch to a high explosive anti-tank round to see if I can get one through the top of the Object 268 version 4. But it looks like just as my round hit the enemy tank, he was able to avoid that damage. Not many other tier 9 heavy tanks could be so confident in this position with just such good frontal armor and having that flexibility while also still having the alpha damage to really chonk out its opponents. And this is where the, the 114 does feel undoubtedly great. And with 390 meters view range and the availability of field mods on a tier 9 tank like this to be able to boost it up a little bit further, it does feel great in that regard as well. We bounce the STR V1030, I change rounds, and unfortunately my aim time is so long that by the time I've managed to aim at the vehicle, the tank has been killed by my SDB1. Look at this aim time, it does feel more like a derpy tank destroyer, right? But the results sometimes speak for themselves. And doing 480 damage to a tier 10 TD so reliably with my standard rounds in that kind of a situation definitely feels as if it's maybe something that's worth waiting for. This tank, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a weirdo. If you were to take vertical stabilizers on a tank like this, you would definitely be able to stop the reticle from being able to bloom out. But what would you sacrifice? Would you sacrifice the vehicle's all-round performance with the vents? Would you sacrifice the vehicle's mobility and be happy to just drive around at 35 kilometers an hour in a tank like this in a game which is frankly getting faster and faster and faster these days? All right, 11 more hit points on the Object 268 version 4. Am I going to reload a high explosive round? I should have probably reloaded a high explosive round there. And by the time my vehicle had finished aiming, I would have probably been able to deliver it. And this is where the, the 114 just feels like a chunky big boy tank that can just sit in front of things. You've got so many hit points that nobody seems to want to push you. You've got so much alpha damage that you can be able to deal with your opponents. Reload your high explosive anti-tanks for the side of the Emil turret. you got the hit points. Maybe I can aim in here against the weak point. Nope, probably should have fired a high explosive anti-tank round there. And then if you've got your 2k at the end of the game, it doesn't really matter if you rush in. And then it's kind of clean up squad. One thing I'd love to... Well, one thing I must highlight about this tank is that all of my games were so darn consistent. I don't think I had one game where I didn't deal at least like 1,500 or 2,000 damage because you've got the penetration to reliably make your shots. You've got the flexibility to use a variety of positions. And how can you really die that quickly with 2,600 hit points? But on the other hand, I hardly ever got into any situations where this vehicle really felt like it was able to make those aggressive flashy plays to be able to collect all of the scalps of the enemy team and be able to, to have those crazy rounds that you, you dream of in World of Tanks. So now I want to roll out on Erlenberg again and you'll see that I'm cheekily reloading a high explosive round to try and get one at the FV4005 here. Aiming, aiming, aiming and suddenly a wild STRV1030 appears. Oh well, I can intuition twice even at the start of this game and put an AP round through the lower plate. Definitely not the best trades I've ever made in my life, but consistent damage against the STRV-103B. 
And this kind of a position on Erlenberg, I feel like is going to seriously work out for us. We're a fairly tall tank. We're going to be able to shoot over this little gap in the wall towards our left and just control this alleyway, as well as also hopefully get some side shots across with some vision against the Chaff U tier 4. And I should be able to keep the western flank honest from this position. So you can see that I'm reloading a high explosive anti-tank round here. I'm looking for a shell on the Object 140. And full disclosure, I was kind of learning this position during this game. And you can see that, oh, I've nearly got the gun depression, but unfortunately I'm not quite a cran farm. What I'm trying to do right now is get my left track over this wall and then be able to turn the tank to actually manage to, uh, to kind of mount the wall a little bit to then be able to use my gun depression to see around the corner. However, it wasn't to be. So there's a Super Conqueror sitting opposite us. This T95 obviously doesn't want to push around the corner anymore. This position is, I would say it's it's overpowered. I, I, I don't ever like positions where you feel like you're safe from every single angle apart from one, especially in a vehicle like this, where, well, what's gonna happen? A vehicle's gonna come and just, even if it was a, a bat chat, it's not able to kill me every single time, even though I'm on two thirds of my hit points firing into my lower plate frontally. It's gonna take them 12 and a half seconds to be able to do that, which unfortunately is kind of actually uh, shorter than the reload on this tank, so I'd probably only be able to shoot once. The DPM on this vehicle, one of the most troll things that I think I've ever experienced in World of Tanks. And it definitely freaks me out a little bit. Finally, I've actually managed to find a position. Uh, unfortunately, my lower plate is fully exposed, but I've managed to somehow squeeze my tank into a scenario where I'm going to be able to get the shots. And I'm almost, I'm also testing here to see whether a vehicle like this can actually manage to mount the wall and get over. And it looks like it could be possible. All of that effort for not much result. That should really be the, the soundbite for this tank. Uh, you do have to put in a tremendous amount of effort, I feel, with the vehicle if you want to get a lot from it. And it feels like it's almost not worth it with regards to the effort. I would far rather kind of play this tank in a half sleepy state and just be happy with dealing kind of like the 2,000 damage or on a, on a good occasion 3,000 damage um, and still making profit, which is what all this tank is, is about, right? It is a tier 9 premium tank. That's why people are going to be playing it and why they're going to be grinding for it inside the, the Mission Marathon series. Because Tier 9 tanks are those vehicles which just have oh-so-convenient matchmaking, so much nicer than Tier 8 matchmaking. Tier 8s don't really see your... Um, don't really see your lovely matchups these days. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for, the lower plate of the... the Super Conqueror. We waited so long and our aim time was so bad that we didn't even manage to get the shot in cleanly. Maybe vertical stabilizers would be better than using vents on this tank? Oh, I really don't want to make my DPM even worse. I definitely think the vertical stabilizers would be better than a gun rammer on this tank, however. I, I, I wouldn't choose those. Would the gun rammer be better than the, um, the durability module on this vehicle? Possibly, but for every time you drop the durability module on this tank, there may be an opportunity where you're going to get caught out. My second set of equipment for this vehicle, by the way, is going to be gun rammer, vents, and durability. I think I'll use that for maps which I know I'm not going to need any kind of mobility on. So unfortunately, I'm not quite loaded in time to be able to get this Super Conqueror in this scenario, and for some reason I'm firing high explosive rounds. I know why I'm firing high explosive rounds there. It's because I believe uh, my gun was damaged, or was it my ammo rack was damaged by the Char Future 4, and because I'm using a premium repair kit, I would have repaired in a single tap. Whenever my gun gets damaged, my natural instincts are to press 4-3. And of course, if you have a premium repair kit instead of a regular repair kit, then you start loading a high explosive round after. And the high explosive round only dealt 35 damage to that Super Conqueror. That definitely doesn't feel like the best uh, time investment in World of Tanks history. 17 second reload to be able to deal 35 damage, no thank you. 17 second reload to deal 500 damage against the 50 TP definitely worth it. And this is where this tank is just great. Sitting on a corner, out trading its opponents. It's got really good pen. I've got better pen than the Super Conqueror has on my standard rounds compared to theirs. And I can clap. If they give me their weak points, I can totally do it. And if they don't give me their weak points, then maybe I can even reload the high explosive anti-tank rounds and I got 311 millimeters of penetration to maybe be able to go through the top of their tank. That's really all there is to say about this vehicle. 
It is not your flashy tank. It is a very consistent, grindy, damage dealing vehicle. And what is this Super Conqueror 2? He's trying to reverse side scrape here. What are you doing? But okay, well, you can lose a thousand damage. And I just managed to squeeze in the shot around the corner against the Super Conqueror. I was happy about that. This vehicle will be a frustrating tank to play against on a ridge line. Honestly, it's a lot like a Torren farm, but at least it does have a weak point on top. If this tank didn't have a weak point on top, I would be very annoyed that it was going into the game. I still feel as if it's a, a fairly frustrating vehicle to play against. And can we squeeze over there? Maybe it's not a good idea when there's a T95 around the corner and a Conqueror, right? Probably not. This vehicle is going to be really dull to play against because it's going to sit there. You're not going to penetrate it and you're not going to want to drive around the corner against it unless you're going to all in it to fire multiple times. But good luck trying to chunk your way through 2,600 hit points without taking at least 500 or probably more likely 1,000 damage from this tank. Although I will say that for every tank that will struggle to be able to deal with this, there will be some tanks that get to absolutely farm it. And those are better hull down tanks. Ones like the Cranvar, where if he was to aim at my weak point on top, he would be able to do very well. But I'm going to keep my weak point moving. It looks like the Cranvang's actually trying to aim at my weak point here and bounces three rounds. And now that I've bounced three rounds from the Cranvang, I guess my job is done. And that gives me about 20 seconds to be able to move on to other things. World of Tanks hold down capabilities, right? Conqueror using the uh, Carnarvon's gun there with only 280 damage manages to actually Amarak me. I'm going to reload an AP round here for the Conqueror. I don't want to waste the heat rounds even though I'm on my press account. And uh, yeah, that you see the wiggle of the mouse. You're going to have to count how frustrated I got playing this tank and then make your mind up about whether it's worth it. I can tell you that this vehicle frustrated me more than probably, I'd say, any premium tank I've ever played. Uh, which is weird because do I think that it's a terrible tank? No, I don't think it's a terrible tank. I think it's, it's pretty okay. It's just not your flashy vehicle. And as I said, it's that kind of jackal and hide tank. Sometimes it's going to feel awesome. Sometimes it's going to feel as if it's your worst enemy. Does that feel like something that you want to spend money on in World of Tanks? Or does that feel like something that you want to grind 40 or 50 hours to be able to get your hands on? I mean, that's only a decision that you're going to be able to make. Nevertheless, as a tier 9 premium, and I think that's something that's very important to talk about with a vehicle like this. Does it feel better to play this at tier 9 than it does to play something like a Tornbang at tier 8? probably say yes. Although I would argue that I think the Torrenvang at tier 8 is probably better than this tank is at tier 9, at least in my opinion. Because this vehicle has slightly less DPM at tier 9 compared to the Torrenvang having it at tier 8. And there's something that I must highlight here. You can't replace DPM on a tank. Wargaming. You, you can give it high alpha damage. You can give it great armor. You can give it a whole variety of bells and whistles but in world of tanks it comes down to frankly sometimes just being able to take out your opponents and with a vehicle like this it's just not able to do that it's not able to make aggressive plays that sometimes the game dictates it's not able to all in a vehicle and make a huge outplay on it no, this is just something that frankly makes the enemies frustrated, feel as if they're banging their head against a wall until they've knocked themselves unconscious. If that sounds like the playstyle for you, then yeah, I think this is going to be a strong tank. But for a lot of players, I think it's going to be very boring. And there are going to be certain statistics about the tank that will end up frustrating you into submission. So a decent enough game here for us on Erlenberg. 3,700 damage and 4 kills puts us on top of experience by about 50%. Currently, this tank is not making bonus credits, however, but that will be fixed in a micro patch between me recording this video and releasing it on Friday. I'd also like to highlight that this wasn't my highest damage game in this tank. I had quite a few where I managed to do more damage, albeit against equal and lower tiered tanks. 
but the games were just so boring. What do you want to see? Uh, on Arctic region, I pretty much just sat in a hold down position, bounced my opponents a lot, blocking 2,800 damage, fired, hoped I hit, waited 17 seconds, fired, hoped I hit, and waited 17 seconds. That is what this tank did. It was an incredibly boring experience for me, but just because it's not my playstyle doesn't mean that I don't have to recognize it as a contender in World of Tanks. And unlike the Stritz van K, which is an incredibly slow tank without having any kind of hull armor that you can't even really play the vehicle like a heavy tank and even some turret armor, which was definitely going to troll you, especially if your opponent started to fire gold or get above you. There's absolutely no doubt that the WZ-114 is a very novel tank and it's going to be a very interesting one to see that I think will be polarizing within the community about whether they like it or whether they hate it. And one thing I'd also like to highlight is that if you see this tank and you really want to have this kind of play style, but you don't want to have to purchase the tank or grind in the mission marathon to be able to get it, spoilers, you could just get yourself an E75 and you're going to have pretty much an identical kind of tank. I would say almost a better tank, more fun with a significantly better rate of fire, something that is worth investing a gun rammer into. And I would argue a tank like that, the E75, would be more of a weapon of war and less of a spectator just hoping that the enemies are going to get bored. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this tank review and you felt I painted up. Oh, I just spilled water all over the floor. What a blooming disaster. I really hope <laughs> I really hope you <laughs> you felt that I painted a fair picture of the tank. If you did and you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you think I need to be less flamboyant with my hands as if I'm Italian or something and knocking over water bottles, then let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know in the comments what you think about the WZ-114. Do you think it looks like an awful tank? Do you think it looks like an incredible tank? Will you grind it? Will you buy it? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.